And we are recording, and I'm here with Nadine Artemis. Thank you for joining us at the Healing Mastery Summit. We really appreciate having you, and thank you for joining us. I'm happy to be here. So uh, for those listening, Nadine is uh, an author of Renegade Beauty, uh, Reveal and Revive Your Natural Radiance and Holistic Dental Care. Um, you received rave reviews uh, on uh, the product that you have. Also, uh, you've been in the New York Times, the National Post, Hollywood Reporter, and you described by Alanis Morissette, which is pretty awesome, as a true sense visionary. And you formulated a stunning collection of rare special botanical compounds. Uh, your healing creations, along with the concept of renegade beauty, encourages effortlessness and inspires people to rethink conventional notions of beauty and wellness. So again, thank you for joining us. And um, I'm excited to speak to you about this topic. And the reason being is I've had some serious health issues that stem from my mouth. And so um, basically the first question I have, and one of the questions that um, I think is very important is, where the, the immune system starts in the mouth, correct? And a big part of our immune system is our microbiome, correct? Yeah, those are correct. And yeah, the, the microbiome is so key. And our guts, I think we have all learned as a society in the past decade a lot more about the health of our guts and how it affects other systems. So of course the mouth is a direct link to the alimentary canal, the whole digestive system. Yeah. And it's connected to the gut's microbiome. And then we can also understand that the mouth also has a unique microbiome. Even though they're inextricably bound, the gut and the mouth, there is something that we want to understand about the mouth. And for whatever reason, I feel like culturally in our Western society, we have grown up to understand somehow that the mouth is not connected to the body. Yeah. And yet it really, really is. I mean, you know, there's there's the pathway of direct digestion, there's um, the bloodstream where it can connect to, and our saliva and swallowing and all that kind of stuff. So it's very much connected. And anything that's sort of a dysbiosis in our mouth is gonna reflect in other areas. So much so to the fact that, that there's um, many doctors, dentists and functional medical doctors that believe that anything that's going on in the body, you have to first look at its roots in the mouth because otherwise you're not getting to the root cause and there's even a doctor dr isles in um oh i hope i got his name right dr joseph isle i believe it's in my book he anyway he's been treating cancer for over 40 years in europe and he always asks people to remove any root canals before they can proceed with their treatment so and then we only once you know i feel like as a collective with dentistry, obviously some dentists, holistic dentistry, we've been understanding that for a few decades. And then only all the new data that comes in just keeps confirming that. For example, root canals are a huge issue and very common. Or even like we can look at things like wisdom tooth extractions. Yes. So, you know, both of these things are pretty common. Maybe you'll have a wisdom tooth extraction before a root canal, because that often is something that can happen, you know, in your early 20s. Yes. And um, studies show that over, you know, I think it's about 69% of all wisdom teeth removals do not have to be removed. And so there's that, you know, oh, we don't need the tooth. So first of all, there's just that, which changes the structure of the jaw and the occipital ridge and everything like that. And that we might need those teeth later in life or, you know, or we're not even recognizing that we were born with that kind of a structure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't mean like born as in humans born, not just like our own individual births, but like we need those teeth. There's a reason for that jaw. Yeah. And so, you know, then we're understanding diet and eating grains, for example, has like narrowed, you know, the shape of the jaw and we don't have as much room. So there's that whole issue. But then the other issue with the wisdom tooth removal, you know, unless sometimes it definitely has to be removed. It's growing in sideways. It's infected. There are reasons to remove one, but that's very high when we're at a 60, 69% rate of like, nobody needs that removed. Yeah. Then what happens is it's removed and it's extracted, but the periodontal ligament is left in. And this can also be just for any tooth extraction. 
but the periodontal ligament is left in. And that is standard. That's what's taught in dentist school. So we can't really blame the dentist. But now we know that, that leaving that ligament in is sort of akin to leaving the placenta in after giving birth. Mm -hmm. And so the gum grows over it and then it creates a jaw rot, uh, technically known as a jaw cavitation. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, that will just... You'll go on with your life, you know, maybe you got your wisdom tooth out at 20 and then come 40, 50, uh, you'll have jaw rot that won't even show up on an x-ray until it's 80% rotted. And so that's a new area. Most dentists don't even know about it. A good biological dentist will know. And so we may have these spots in our jaw that are just pulling our whole health down and um, we need to get that cleared out. So which is, it is, it's a simple procedure. And what a dentist will do is they'll first check, um, you know, there's already a hole there, the tooth's already gone. They'll use their very fine instruments and see if they're sort of sinking or they have, some have a special x-ray. And then they'll, um, if it's mushy in there, as in your jawbone being mushy, they'll scrape out the decay, allowing a blood clot to form, which will cleanse the area. And then also hopefully that dentist is gonna inject the site with ozone and also some PRP, which is your own platelet therapy, injected back in for that to heal. And, and this truly is, to, ha to have that cavitation in your mouth is truly going to weigh down your whole autoimmune system. And most people won't even know, you know, why they have recurring headaches or anything like that. Did you have that situation? I, I, honestly, I think I still have it. I think I haven't fully gotten out of my health issues. Yeah. I have it because I could literally feel... Uh, like things moving in my jaw. I don't know if that makes sense. But, well, sometimes um, that could be even a gum, you know, wanting to get the gum stronger, but it could be that as well. And there, I think an interesting story to highlight this is um, one of my favorite dentists on the planet is Dr. Stuart Nunnally. And he's done um, some good tests on root canals, that sort of thing. Anyway, he was a whole, as he would say, a holistic dentist, probably through the 80s and 90s. And he was just removing mercury. So then he got a lot of mercury toxicity to the, to the point where, you know, he, he, he could barely kind of lift his leg over a curb and now he runs triathletes and stuff, but he, he triathlons. So he was wondering what to do and he was kind of giving up. And then somebody luckily got him connected to Dr. Hal Huggins, who has really been educating us since about mercury since the sixties. He's no, he died a few years ago, but he, we owe a lot of our current knowledge to him. So he said to Dr. Nunnally, okay, I will meet you. He had to meet him in Canada and Montreal. Um, and so he said, you know, we've got to get the mercury and detoxic, but detox the mercury, but your biggest issue is going to be jaw cavitations. Yeah. That was the first thing that they went to do to clear up his health yeah. was clear those up. So it is very important. And then on the, on a similar, because you also, you have that bacteria then going into your bloodstream all the time. And it's very toxic. So you add to that, which in very uh, another common thing in a mouth is a root canal. Mm -hmm. And now most biological holistic dentists understand that there is never a time where a root canal is appropriate. So if you're looking for a new dentist, you do want to see and understand their thoughts on root canals. You're, the best dentist will not practice them at all. And that's when you know you've got a really good dentist. So what happened? So the theory of a root canal was a good one because you've got a, a tooth that's no longer working in your mouth. And, we, and then the hope was they'll just clean out the pulp chamber and the insides. And then you can, you know, not have that mouth, but you I mean, not have that tooth alive, but you still have it in place. And then you wouldn't need an implant and it's a natural tooth. So we can see why that was evolved, like happened, but the reality is, is that a root canal, so the theory was it's sterilized and cleaned out, but it can never be sterilized and cleaned out because inside each tooth is over 300 meters of microscopic tubules that can never, ever, ever be sterilized. And so what a root canal does, and uh, this was another of Nunnally's tests where they did an independent study, and they took out root canals that were textbook perfect, so they were you know, they had been done previously and on x-rays, they were still showing to be perfect. 
Because yeah. sometimes you'll get a root canal and then it still doesn't ever feel good. And the person's like, oh, it's not really working because they didn't really get rid of the infection. So yeah. these were totally getting gold stars. They weren't showing up as a problem on an x-ray. They removed those perfect root canals and then had them independently lab tested. And 100% of the root canals showed severe necrotic bacteria. So of course, varying, but all of them had it. And strange bacteria too, like leprosy, Lyme, just you know, things that we don't want in our body. Yeah. And so when you have a root canal all day long, you know, chewing and that is squirting the toxins back into the bloodstream and it creates this perfect environment because no oxygen can get there, no antibiotics can get into that area and they can just grow and have their own little, you know, pathogenic party. Yeah. So root canals are never something that you want. And so if you have a root, if you have a, autoimmune issue or a health issue you definitely want to be looking at any past root canals and then you want to have them extracted but then you want to make sure they're going to be extracted properly and you're not going to have that periodontal ligament left in and i mean that's hard to hear because and i'm sure if anybody's listening and they have root canals it's probably a bit like you know but also so know that i mean if you're feeling perfectly healthy it could, it's still going to be having that bacteria, but maybe your immune system and your constitution can handle it, yeah. you know? And then the other thing, um, cause then it's sort of like, well, then what do you do? Right? So you want to get it extracted. If it's one of the back, uh, molars, you can just have it removed and then leave that space. You really, truly can. You can just, you don't need an implant. Um, in my case, like, yeah. I have it root now, but like I have big teeth. Yes. I, my molars removed. And I remember like the tooth was like massive. Wow. And that must have gone like deep down in. And I can feel like around here where I had one of the removed is where I have issues. And I constantly feel something like pulsing or throbbing there, like under the jaw. So you have this space. Do you have this space now? You don't have a tooth there? Yeah, there's no tooth there. So I, if it was pro, it pro, it could be a jaw cavitation issue because perhaps they didn't remove the periodontal ligament. Yeah. And then if it's a front area, you know, obviously you want to have teeth for smiling and all that. Then yeah. really at this stage, the only implant that is safe for the immune system is zirconium. Okay. Never, ever do titanium. Um, but zirconium, it's not as popular or well known here in North America, very popular in Europe. Yeah. And um, it shows pretty good results for autoimmune. So, of course, anytime we're introducing something foreign to the body, you know, it's going to be, there's going to be immune compatibility issues, but there's zirconium seems the cleanest at this stage. So, what's the steps now to figure out if you have a cavitation? Like do you just go to the dentist and then they can check for it? Because I know that they have um, thermography. Um, I remember being told that yeah. I have thermography and then they can see. Yeah, the so thermography is good because then you can see that, which, which isn't always necessarily at a dentist office. Right. Um, but yeah, then you can see heat lines that connect to areas. And um, especially for women, it's, it's, well, it's good for everybody, but then there's a connection between. Um, Breast cancer cases, like I think 99% have a root canal on the same side as the breast that became imbalanced. Wow. That doesn't mean if you have a root canal, you're going to get breast cancer, but it's just showing a correlation there, yeah. which is really quite fascinating. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, so yeah, thermography is good. Well, you, you really do have to find a dentist that also believes that, you know, cavitations are a thing because you could... Some won't even know it exists, and yeah. then many, or they'll just think, but it's a, it's, it's a real thing. Yeah, because one of, one of the guys that I work with does the thermography, and then they actually do this thing where they spit the blood to get the stem cells, and then they inject it back into the Yeah, that's the PRP. PRP yeah. So yeah, you, so they'll just take some blood out of your arm, and then they put it in a centrifuge, separate the plasma from the blood. And if you're healthy, it's great. Cause then you, well, I mean, it's all good. And then if you're healthy, it's even better. Yeah. And then any work that you get done, you would, um, 
you know, if you're even having a root canal removed and you're again going to the, a really great biological dentist, they'll do it right there in the office and then you'll have your work done and then they'll inject all the areas with the PRP because right. then that's telling the body to like, oh, bring your own stem cells and your own nutrients back to healing that area. So it's a, it's really a revolutionary thing in, in oral care. Gotcha. Okay. So that makes sense. So somebody who has a root canal or even if they have a big molar pulled out and that didn't heal properly or maybe it has a cavitation that they should first get their mouth checked. And I've heard this, this is also in Chinese medicine, correct? It's all linked to or at least Yeah, every I have a tooth chart in my book and also I'm it's all I'm sure it's in you just Google like sort of tooth meridians. Right. And it will show like what organs and what pathways go through the teeth and connect with the rest of the body. And if you kind of imp, uh, put your own dental history over that, I think you'll get some more clues. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, an interesting question I have for you. Um, my wife grew up in the Caribbean. And there was a point where I think she just ate candy all the time. And she yeah. was perfectly beautiful. And then me... I grew up here in the States, and first off, my whole mouth is filled with mouth fillings. I have gotten them removed. Uh, but I had cavities, and my teeth are a little bit more sticky. And so, what's, what's the difference there? What, what? My guess is that her lineage, maybe she was maybe more of a first generation to eat more candy. Okay. And then her her stock of her of her ancestors is a little healthier. Whereas I feel like, and again, it depends country to country and family to family. But in North America, we're kind of on a third generation right. of of like you know my my grandmother had mercury fillings and had antibiotics and ate jam, yeah. you know, like all day. So then that's coming down. So we're getting more into the different uh, generations now. So it plays a role on the genetics. Yes. Of the genes. Which, yes, and also like, um, you know, bringing in the work of Pottinger and Weston Price is really good to understand a right. lot of that um, yeah. stuff. And really, and, and, then, and the nutrition that we need. Also the work of um, Drs. Melendi, there was like a husband and wife team. They really understood that we needed vitamin D yeah. and um, which I, being in the Caribbean, your wife's family would have gotten way more vitamin D because we're also on about the third generation too of like, oh no, don't use any sun, <laughs> you know, and we're on our, you know, th gener decades of factory farming. Mm -hmm. So when we're eating factory farm foods, then we're not getting foods that are rich in vitamin K2 and D3 because it's like the food is grown in the shadows of factory farming and the pesticides like the plants are also growing in the shadows of pesticides, so their photosynthesis isn't happening as much. Yeah. And we need the K2 and D3, which comes from like grass-fed, you know, eggs that where the chickens are outside and cows that are eating grass and then creating this gold and yellow butter. We need the, that fat so much because it's those vitamins that then usher the minerals into the bones. Mm -hmm. They take that magnesium and the calcium and they, and they drive it into the bones instead of letting it circulate in the blood. In the blood serum which isn't where we need it so that's a great question for you because we're seeing a rise of osteoporosis and everybody that i deal with they always come in and say doctor gave me calcium and i tell them that it's not anything for you because you have the highest intake of calcium right and the highest level of osteoporosis so this is directly affecting the teeth as well right so it, it, my, from my understanding is it that our blood levels of minerals are low, so it's pulling from the bones and the teeth just to keep it stable. Yes, yes. And so yes. This is what we're seeing the deterioration of our skeletal system. Yes, and the calcium, obviously, the supplement is just um, mainly, I mean, obviously, we're speaking generally here, but it's generally BS, you know, yeah. the substance of it and it being absorbed by the body. And it's really, and then we've got issues of calcification because it's not going into the bones or there's, maybe you found a great calcium or you're eating, but then we don't have the D2 and the K3 doing that catalytic action to drive it in. Gotcha. That, yeah, that makes complete sense. So to speak about, we, we touched on the mouth and filling, and I think that's an important topic for everybody to discuss because, or to listen to because, uh, Many people listening right now might actually have a mouth. Yes. And what What 
what is happening here? What's the what's the potential for living with the Malibu film? Yes. So that I mean, it's a crazy thing. Like this, you know, pure toxic metal being put inches from our brain for even a day is crazy. Um, so yeah, they're amalgam fillings, which are mercury, um, also known as silver fillings, because I do have people have said, oh, I don't have mercury fillings, I have silver fillings. And that's if it's silver, it's there. Even gold fillings are a mix of metals. Um, I don't think they have mercury in it, but they've got nickel and different things. And even porcelain has metal in it. And, and some of that can be nickel as well. And nickel's also very toxic. Braces are nickel. And also, um, I, I used to have this, you get your braces removed and then they put in a, a wire behind your teeth mm -hmm. um, to, make it doesn't, to make sure it doesn't move. I, as soon as I understood what that was all about, I had it removed. My teeth haven't shifted since then. So it's important also to keep your teeth in place. It's a mineralization, it's gum health because the gums are like holding them in place too. But mercury filling, you know, that, you know, we have the data, we know it's a neurotoxin, yeah. you know, we know it can lead to the pathways of, of things like Alzheimer's and stuff. But the thing is too, on the daily level, on a daily grind, it's not good. And then of course, depending on your constitution, I mean, it literally could just be the mercury feeling throwing everything off. Yeah. So there's so many reasons why it's not good. One is it's a heavy metal and these heavy metals feed toxins in the body so then if you've got candida which we all do but it can make it get out of control you know it can make the natural yeast get out of control as dr Hals huggins put it he said um heavy metals are the are the marriage for microbes it's like they eat them for breakfast so all your pathogens in your body love the heavy metals they love that mercury filling and then don't they 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 consume them and then they excrete an even more exactly. pernicious neurotoxins. Yes, and then you've got those, this kind of gases, the VOCs just yeah. proliferating in the body as well. So it's crazy. And then the other thing is, is that whether you got your mercury fillings yesterday or 40 years ago, they are emitting mercury vapors 24-7 yeah. only to increase by 1500% the release of mercury vapors when you're having hot foods or chewing. It's, it's really insane. Then the other crazy thing about it all is there's a real protocol to, so for, there's a protocol in standard dentistry to remove them. And then of course there's really great protocols in biological dentistry where they'll have ventilation and dental dams and, you know, things sucking the vapor out of your mouth. So you want to also, don't just go to a normal dentist to remove mercury fillings and certainly don't go to a dentist that's still putting them in and removing them. Yeah, I had them all removed at once by a standard dentist. So but did I. Even though it was bad to do it that way. Yeah. It actually felt tremendous relief. Oh, good. Not leaving the case. Like, I had this severe uh, pain, like stabbing pain in the back of my head. For oh. And it actually gave some relief just getting them drilled out, which is amazing. Yeah. And I had a holistic dentist who became holistic because he had two heart attacks due to the amount of mercury that he was taking in through the standard practice. Yes, yes, it's very dangerous. And doctors, I mean, dentists have a high suicide rate and a high mercury toxicity rate. It's, it's really phenomenal. Um, then also with mercury fillings, so there is a standard removal, even in a normal dentist's office, it treats it like a, ha like a, ha like a hazardous material. Mm -hmm. And it didn't change. When it was removed from your mouth to how they're disposing of it, the alchemy does not change. So, you know, the procedure they're doing to take that metal away from the dental's office is, um, is crazy considering it's allowed in the mouth. Right. We have um, a beautiful spring-fed lake it's about 30 acres. And if I threw one of the, like a tooth or two of mercury in there, the lake would be deemed unswimmable by the EPA. But we put it in our mouths, you know, and of course, there's going to be constitutions that kind of can rock and roll with them. I mean, it may be doing things to them, but they're okay. And, and you've got just more sensitive people or different constitutions just creating, you know, it can create, you know, mental health issues. It can, you know, it can, it can, 
or just the gut, if it throws off the gut, and we know the gut is connected to mental health, to depression, anxiety, it can throw off the thyroid big time. So it's like, you know, do you have a thyroid problem? Or do you have heavy metals just abundantly in the body? Yeah, so what's the step like, for example, if someone with, they have thyroid problems, first they want to go to a holistic practitioner that gets them removed correctly. So yes. Exposing themselves to more uh, heavy metals. Then from there, what's the steps like? What are they like? Okay, they've had them for, they've had them for 30, 40 years, let's say, they get them removed. They know now that they're filled with mercury. Where do they go from there? Well, you can, you know, and then maybe that's when you'd want to work with a, a functional doctor or something else. So you maybe want to check your levels, which there's hair and urine and debates about which is better. Um, and then, you know, proceed to have a program for that. I know um, the people can learn a lot by, and I have no affiliation, but going to the Quicksilver, doc, uh, Christopher Shade. I don't know if he's a doctor, but he's, he deeply has gone into how to detoxify mercury from the body. Okay. So there's that. I mean, iodine is also really essential. It's a, it's an essential nutrient, just like magnesium is in the body. Right. Generally, um, the whole planet is about 70%. 70% of the whole population of the planet is depleted in iodine. And um, iodine helps to chelate heavy metals out of the body. And it's a mineral we need. Yeah. So, you know, perhaps cilantro does it as well, but like we don't have, we don't need cilantro. Yeah. So iodine is really important and it will help a lot of other body systems as well. And it also helps to like, you know, um, from the work of Dr. Guy Abraham, he understood that after 30 days of iodine, then you start getting rid of like some deeper metals like aluminum, lead. Yeah. So, and there's great books on it, like Iodine by Dr. David Brownstein and the Iodine Crisis. Yeah. And those talk about, you know, um, iodine for detoxing and like maybe going to higher dose for a while, getting it in the body. So iodine is a really great thing for that. A it's nascent. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. So it's a hal. So if you remember your periodic table, iodine is part of the halide family yeah. and it's the other halides that are toxic to the body especially the thyroid so bromides fluorides chlorine mm. perch laurates which is like a jet fuel yeah. so when our receptors especially because the eye the thyroid needs it the most and then for women it's the breasts yeah. but everywhere we literally need it all over our body um so then the if the receptors aren't filled with iodine then they start sort of locking into other things radiation uh, bromide fluoride you know what I mean? so it gets filled with the things that's the exact opposite of what we need but then along comes iodine it's also a halide yeah. and it is the best for getting rid of all the other halides yes so i i, I don't know have you ever heard of holder clark yes yeah she uh, like that's where i learned a lot about the iodine she would do like ah. iodine and stuff like that. And, uh, oh, yeah. And, um, so, so basically, can you use it topically to get absorbed into the body as well? Like without? Yeah. Absorbing? Yeah. So I, w I would recommend, you know, you have a couple drops in your water too, because it's just good, like just to get it in that way. And then topically, now it's always going to be with a bit of alcohol. Yeah. So I would suggest just a little bit of like a, a oil or a serum to go just to, so it's not so stingy on the skin. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, fibrocystic breasts are applied topically cuts. I mean, it's what we know of too, is that red liquid that was used to heal soldiers' wounds and that kind of thing. Yeah, so um, what about children, for example, like my kids, would that be a good thing to just like put a couple of drops in their water? Yeah, I can't, you know, I never, I never really talk doses because everybody's different, but those books will give doses or I'm sure there's somewhere on the internet, but yeah, kids need it. It's an essential nutrient. Yeah. And also if the mother has it in plenty supply, that also helps prevent, um, you know, mental issues in the birth of their baby. Ah, okay. So it's, it's, it's essential. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, how do we get, you know, we talked about the genetics of the white teeth. Yes. But what can we do if we yes. are third generation to get white teeth? Yeah, so well, with white teeth, it's because um, we're so in this culture of the veneer, right? It's just like, yeah. 
who cares what's going on the inside <laughs> as long as everything's sparkly on the outside. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely a good example in the tooth industry because whiteness actually comes from within and all the kits and the bleaching wear away the enamel making it thinner and then causing a yellowing uh before it's time so you're kind of in a vicious cycle where you're doing the ultra bleaching whitening whitening and then you're getting your your teeth will become yellow faster yeah. because it's not addressing the root of the issue so whiteness actually comes from within because the enamel is actually glassy and transparent like a window. Yeah. And then, so it's reflecting the health of the tooth underneath. And then I just think of it as like, you want that inner pulp chamber to be like fat in that sense of the word of filled with vitamin D3 and K2 from the nutrients you're eating from that really good ghee or the butter or, you know, so we got to get that fat in. the fat and the minerals are going to reflect back for white teeth. Yeah. Now also in, in our worlds, I'm sure we have a lot of people eating really rich pigmented food like uh, blueberries or spirulina or red wine. Yeah. And obviously that can be discoloring, but what might be going on is that old, uh, cause I also feel like in our, in, in these sort of healthier wor worlds too, we're a little bit more um, afraid of the dentist or like, we're kind of like, hmm, I can tell that's not that holistic. So I'm going to ignore it, yeah. you know? Um, so you want to find that good dentist and then hopefully they'll have a really good hygienist and then you'll get the old tartar and calculus removed because sometimes all it's getting discolored is that really old calculus and tartar, not the daily plaque that you still might be successfully removing. So you want to sort of start fresh that way. And, um, most holistic dental places will have, um, a salt rinse kind of like a, it's like a salt blasting. You know, I, you know, when they, used, we, they would, if you were um, renovating an old, beautiful building and they'll do that sandblasting to kind of make it come to life. And, and so you can do that. It's very gentle with the teeth and it gets really white. And then you kind of have that fresh start. And then, um, you know, I, we have eight steps that people can follow, eight oral care steps that will help bring people's mouths up to, up to as healthy as they can be. And also know that like, you know, because I've said a lot of things that I'm sure are making people kind of cringe with their mouths. And so I'm like, oh my God. But really the health of your mouth can evolve. You know, gum tissue can get strong again. It can be, um, get resilient. You can help regain the alkalinity and the mineral rich of saliva, which helps to heal the teeth. And you can really take care of the mouse microbiome and evolve your mouth and, and even get it to a better place before you see a dentist so that your appointment might be shorter and less expensive, but you re the, our teeth are alive. And I think that's what I, I missed that understanding when I was growing up. And I think a lot of people did too, because the dentist didn't think it was alive, yeah. but your teeth are alive. They're connected to the body. You know, your mouth's alive, the saliva is working and all of that you can reharmonize to, to get health back in your mouth. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I have this weird hack that I like fell upon. I mean, I guess I didn't really qualify. I just used kind of common sense in my knowledge. And I wanted to see what you thought about it. You know that people do oil pulling? Yes. What's your thoughts on that? It's great. It's a really great thing. I have seen whiteness really transform for people. Yeah. And it's a, it's a really good thing because it's, a, it's really taking care of the mouse microbiome. Um, we make oil swishing serums for that. I also have an article on the site that goes through it and then helps you like sort of what other things you can do to upgrade okay. your oil pulling experience yeah. and also a recipe for these um, tooth butter cups, yeah. which you can use. You can either put them in those things, you know, when they, you get a fluoride treatment and there's those, you can either do that and then kind of make your own teeth mask yeah. or you can make these little um, cut, like little, like almost like a sugar cube shape thing, pop yeah. them in a jar and then you can have just like these little cubes you can pop in your mouth for oil pulling. So I have recipes for that as well. Awesome. I'm going to have to check that out because yeah. um, what I would do is I do oil pulling for 10 to 15 minutes, then spit it out and we'll have sides in there. And then yep. I'd have a thing of bentonite clay in water. Prepared. Yes. And then I'd switch that around after. And yes. Pull and like pull all, everything out and then just like, um, it was just amazing. Like I, I figured, well, 
there's all these bacteria and that boiling point is going to pull that and that my clay is going to just enhance it and it took it to the next level like i had to have plaque just start falling off amazing start to whiten and my mouth would feel super clean so that's great yeah it was it was uh something simple that i just did and started to help that the health of my mouth when you i was going through sickness i would have like plaque just i think it was just, just like literally like coming out of my mouth that's so good to get out you can also add to your bentonite clay you could add um a little charcoal okay activated charcoal yeah and then just take it to the next level yeah awesome so all right so um mouth health if their gut their mouth microbiome is off you're essentially going to be swallowing that nasty bacteria and that's going to go into your gut you're going to have a hard time feeling right well yeah so then well do, oil pulling is great the clay is a great idea for that as well and tongue scraping that's part of our eight steps as well just like clearing that up and then yeah you're going to want to also you know like just like you want to heal a leaky gut you yeah. want to heal leaky mouth yeah. and because that's to me is like bleeding gums right. cavities yeah. um it's all signs of like permeability that's going the wrong way you know it's like we want we want to i have i have other uh, three steps so i have the eight steps for oral care but then sort of three general steps people can think about which is stop seal and seed okay. so with stopping you want to you know ditch the alcohol mouthwash, the triclosan toothpaste, mm. the, the, even the natural toothpaste with glycerin, which are putting a barrier on your teeth and not allowing the saliva to do its job, mm. um, you know, and not eating like things that will create leaky guts, like, you know, corn and GMO and gluten, all of that's got to go. Mm. And then sealing is about sealing and healing the gums and the mouth. So if you floss and you're bleeding, yeah. You want to seal that up. We, we make beautiful dental serums that you can use for brushing and even oil pulling. And then you can put a drop along your floss. Floss with that beautiful one, that drop that has so much botanical plant information. It's getting up in between the teeth. Yeah. Normally when people do that and they, they've had bleeding gums, that will turn around for them in 24 hours. Some people it will take a bit longer if their gums are really spongy. Yeah. Um, so you want to seal and heal the gums you want to the gums are like kind of turtlenecks around the teeth you want to you hope you don't want to get to that part where they're receding and becoming like a cowl neck yeah. or a v-neck because that part if the gums start pulling back from the tooth that's where the enamel's different and then you're going to get those gum line cavities yeah. so you want to seal and heal that's where you're doing oil pulling and then seeding is about reseeding the guts and the mouth okay. so all the drugstore oral care stuff is literally mutating the mouse microbiome mm. along with some of our dental procedures like like a root canal or yeah. or or that kind of stuff so that's disrupting the the mouth yeah. and then you you through sealing you're you're tightening that up and then seeding so you you want to treat the body like a, it's kind of like a bacterial bank account yeah. and you want to have really diverse investments in there yeah. so you know you want to be eating fermented foods replenishing the gut with prebiotics and probiotics okay. you can be swishing those in the mouth you can take your oil pulling you can pop open a probiotic into that oil pulling do your oil pulling with that probiotic okay. and then we also have these dental syringes that are blunt tipped yeah. so it's not sharp and you can use them over and over again and then you can get um take some liquid that could be um, some dental serum, some water, a pinch of baking soda, a little bit of a probiotic capsule. And then you can get that all up in between the gum line. Yeah. Um, that's even what some dentists are doing now after the, the, after cleaning the teeth, but you don't, you can just do it at home. So, so we want to reseed. This is like uh, amazing. Where can we buy this all on your website? Yes, we do have, um, yeah, we've even got our own probiotics that we created that are grown on annulin. We have the dental syringes, we have the steps. I even have an article on reseeding the mouth. Yeah. It's on our, in our article section. Okay. Yeah, because I know it's like a lot of new information for people. <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. It's like, this is something I focus on. It sounds like you're like a, a <laughs> cutting edge of all of this, like, because uh, I've heard some of these things, but. Uh, um, so, if if someone has a cavitation, like, have you ever heard, I 
I mean, we spoke about it before, but like I've had ozone done at the dentist as well. But other places, they can do like injectable ozone therapy. Yes. If, yes. If, like injected that into the jawline, would that be helpful? That is helpful. We we have we make an ozonated gum gel, which you can rub on places and squirt it in, or even after you've had dental anything, you could just squirt it right in there. So it's really good. But in those circumstances, I mean, hopefully your great new dentist that you found um, will do an injection right into that area. And some, for some, the cavitations need to kind of still be monitored because for whatever reason, that's not enough and they may need more injections. Um, you'll be able to tell with that, but it might need further attendance, which is why, again, it's very important for all of us because to have a really good dentist because a lot of what, if we're older, like not a kid, we're really needing to undo our past dental visits that where they made wrong decisions, you know, where it was incorrect. And so a lot of us have to kind of do this revisionist dentistry which you just want such a skilled, compassionate, pioneering human being to take us like out of that previous dental history. Yeah. And, you know, saying that too, I've written, I have written an article too on like what to ask. So you're calling that new dentist yeah. things that you can ask to really make sure you've gone to the right dentist, because even some holistic dentists, I'm like, this isn't it. You know, this isn't, you know, you're still sending me out with the bottle of Crest toothpaste. You know, they haven't thought it through all the way. Right, they haven't made that total transition. So, yeah. just to speak about, we got about, I think, uh, oh yeah, we got some time. So, amalgam fillings, like, have you done the research as to where this began, how this started, like, why this is happening? Because when I look into it deeper, it seems like it was maybe even done with purpose or like they knew what they were doing. They're like, how did, how did dentists, like, my dad has this whole mouth. And I told him to get it removed. And he spoke to the dentist that put mine in and his in. And the guy said, oh, those are fine. Those are totally fine. Like, like how does somebody not know at this day and age what that's doing? And then how did we get to a point where dentists were putting this in when we knew? I mean, there's cases of thousands of years ago that know what no food is doing for us. Yeah, that's, those are great questions. Um, I did write about a bit about its history in my book, Holistic Dentistry. And I mean, it, it is still bizarre that we even did it. It's, it happened, it was in the 1800s. And even though the Mad Hatters, which were literally people that made hats that went crazy because they put mercury in the rim of the hat, which I still don't even get why, that's but they right. all went crazy. I'm right I'm here right now. I'm in Mad Hatter, Denver, Connecticut. Oh, wow. That's, that's where I am. That's hilarious. So how we got from there to like, oh, let's put it in the mouth. Apparently, like it's, you know, and some dentists prefer it to this day for children because it's like faster and quicker to put on for squirmy children, which is just horrific. It's banned in places. It's banned for pregnant women. Um, it's banned in literally some countries. So yeah, how a, a modern day dentist, I can understand if they did it in the 80s and 90s even yeah. you know but like right now nobody no dentist should have mercury yeah it's like it's so it's in the research is just so abundant right. like it's not even question it's just it's got to go <laughs> but yeah. old habits die hard and obviously somebody has a stake in the game yeah now what what about these fillings that have like the pcb i heard that um, just getting some of those removed that helps women with pregnancy. They have them, they remove them, and then they do a little detoxing, and then all of a sudden they have an easier time getting pregnant. And yeah, the chem, the chem, did, you, did you say the plastic, the um, BP, uh, the BPA? Uh, oh yeah, the BPAs, yeah. Or what did you mention? Um, so the, the, one of the dentists I went to said, we would have women coming in who are having a hard time getting pregnant. They would have these fillings in that I think have the, the BPAs. I think the BPAs, he said. And then they would get them removed, and then they would have, they would get pregnant. Ah, so yes. Directly correlated with affecting their, right, or their you know, uh, reproductive organs. So, in fact, as, um, if there's gum disease, or just which is apparently 98% of people have it, so just your classic periodontal 
disease, which you may not know you have it in a way, like, cause it's not going to be really obvious, but you know, a little bit puffy gums, maybe bleeding, that kind of thing that will literally affect fertility as well. And I write about that in my book, Renegade Beauty wow. and so much to the fact, like either can, um, impact fertility or it can actually lead to premature births. Wow. So, you know, it's so connected yeah. and that's again, where you want to be going to that right dentist where they're only now, again, we're still got to put something forward into the body, but where they already know what is the cleanest of all the options. Some even do blood serum biocompatibility tests to see, especially if you've got a really sensitive body and a lot of autoimmune yeah. situation going on, they will then test what's biocompatible for you. And that's really where we need to be going because, you know, one false move at a dentist can lead to some unknown side effects that can plague somebody for years. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So we're about to the end of the hour here. And um, so I want to just close because we learned a lot, a lot of information. And this, I, I'm hoping uh, the people that are listening to this are taking on, because I, I, this is something I've studied for a long time. And you obviously have extensive knowledge. And this will help a lot of people listening to that. One, health almost starts in the mouth. You can, you, can, you can have an argument that health really starts in the mouth. Correct. Yeah. Keeping the mouth clean is extremely important. Keeping the chemicals and toxins out of your mouth is extremely important. Um, and then vitamin K, vitamin D, um, and then getting good fats is essential for a good, healthy mouth microbiome. Correct? Yep. Is there anything else that we're kind of missing that we went over? If you, get, if you have amalgams, get them in the safely. And yeah, you know, so, yeah. And really, like, you know, you really do want to go one of those dentists that can really, really guide you in the right way. Um, and there's, a, there's also conscious sedation available now, which a lot of dentists use, which keeps you um, where they can do a lot of work in an afternoon, for example. Uh, you're still able to, like, get up and go pee as the patient, yeah. Um, for example, but you're, but it's, you're not feeling any pain because some of the work, like sometimes you'll go to a dentist and they'll have a slow plan for the removal of that mercury. Cause they also have to do it in the right way because of the, the negative and positive charges with the metal. Yeah. And, um, but it also is still going to have a toll on your body. So there's also some wisdom to just really getting it done and getting it done in a short amount of time, depending on your health so that you can really get that fresh start. Yeah. And um, so that's really why you need that really awesome debt. And they are out there, you know, and then we also have, um, we list organizations and also those questions that you can ask to start your journey. Awesome. And um, is there any last thing you'd say to the listeners that um, maybe just would give them inspiration to get moving? Because what happens is people listen to this and they're like, oh, that's great information. And then they don't do anything. And so, uh, yeah, and then a lot of the things I'm saying are sort of big next steps, like finding a dentist and then doing that. But you can do a lot at home by literally stopping those things that I've mentioned, okay. um, which I think is in an article on our website as well. It's definitely in my in our book. So I've got Renegade Beauty, uh, which is a lot the whole body, but there's a very hearty dental chapter in there. And then I also have my book Holistic Dental Care. So you can find the answers there. But I would just say stop. And if you've got that regular drugstore stuff that you're taking care of your teeth, stop right now, pick up some baking soda. You can lit, like, I make all kinds of beautiful products for the mouth, toothpaste, gels, everything. Yeah. But you can literally just start with baking soda or, and continue with that for the rest of your life. It's cheap, it's cheerful, it alkalinizes the mouth, it helps to keep things white. It's a good scrubber, it's very gentle, it's gentler than all toothpaste, even though sometimes people are like, oh no, it's too rough. So just start with that and get some probiotics going and those are, that's a really good first place to start. Awesome, yeah, my grandfather, who was the 97, swore that he never had a cavity because all you do is baking. I believe them. Yeah. yeah. So, it can be that easy. So they can get a home. Like, what's the best way to get them to get in contact? Do you have, do you work with people like individually and one-on-one? -on -one? Like, how do you work with people? 
Yeah, I actually don't do private one-on-ones. However, our team is so, uh, they're, you know, educated by me. And if there's any questions, they always have me as a resource. But anybody can email us at any time through the site or through sage at livinglibations.com. We'll answer any questions or send you in the right direction. We also have half hour free consultations. So I don't do any, but our team does free ones. You can ask any beauty, dental, or health question. We're so there to help you understand it and get it right. And then we have a wonderful resource of articles on our site, uh, which is livinglibations.com. And my books have uh, a lot of answers too. Awesome. So yep, that's at livinglibations.com on Instagram or Facebook. And then your website, uh, was, what, what was the website address? It's, it's livinglibations.com too. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it easy. So any last words before we sign off here, Nadine? Uh, just, it's a lot of information, but just know that your mouth and your teeth are alive and what, wherever you're currently at, it will improve. Awesome. It's been a pleasure. This has really been awesome. Okay? This is something I love to uh, learn about. So thank you for joining us for doing Master Summit with you. And thank awesome. you. Thank you, you too.